people describe me in a, in a lot of different ways. They, they'll know me as, as the TED Talk guy or um, that one guy that drives the Vespa. Sometimes they'll just like know me from those herpes awareness posters. Um, you know, but the description that I definitely get the most is that I'm ethnically ambiguous. <laughs> like, like, people can't tell what I am. Like, my skin is like that, like viral gold and blue dress or white and blue dress, or whatever. <laughs> and I get it. I'm light brown, and that can be confusing. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like the same color as like the infield of a baseball diamond <laughs> or like I'm like off beige, you know, <laughs> cage free egg brown. <laughs> and, and people are always they're always saying since I was a kid that, oh, you're just you're olive skinned. And I think they say that because they don't want to say you're kind of brown. <laughs> uh, but but I don't know about you guys. I am not the color of any olive that I have ever seen. And, and foods come up a lot when it comes to ethnicity. I think people are always trying to uh, decipher my race uh, based on the foods I grew up eating. Like, like, Jordan, let's go to lunch. Do you want to have tacos or falafel? <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, like, we'll go to a Mexican restaurant and people will kind of expect me to order in Spanish, and then I'll say, I'll have the polo asada. <laughs> and the mystery continues. <laughs> Even in my job, this is a true story, I, I worked for a, a birthday party company um, where I would dress up as different characters and go to kids' birthday parties. And you can guess which Disney prince they asked me to play. <laughs> because I'll give you a hint, it wasn't Prince Charming. <laughs> prince Charming would have had me randomly searched at LAX. It's true. My boss, you know, when she hired me, she was like, you know, you're pretty swarthy. And I was like, yeah, compared to you, Kathy. <laughs> and she's like, you know, I think that this could be a whole new world for you. <laughs> and then she asked me to play one of the Al Qaeda pirates that captured Iron Man. I go to a, a predominantly white school, and that school shall remain nameless, uh, but you can use context clues. <laughs> and, they're, and they're always trying to make it look like it's not super whitewashed. Uh, you know, they're always trying to feature me on some sort of campus diversity poster. Uh, there's constantly a bald man following me around with a camera, trying to catch me laughing with a black girl and an Asian man. <laughs> And I always see him, and I never let him get it. <laughs> Every conversation I have about race becomes like a, like a freshman level geography quiz. You know, we'll be, we'll be talking about the drone strikes in Pakistan, or uh, the immigration bans, and people will just kind of look at me to like weigh in with my personal experience. Like, yeah, because your family's from Afghanistan, Iran, <laughs> Constantinople. <laughs> and then they'll just go broad, like, no, the Middle East. Like, guys, if you're guessing between Egypt, Lithuania, and Brazil, you're going to fail this quiz. <laughs> it's kind of cool, though. It's, it's kind of like a superpower. People just, like, won't say the word turban around me. <laughs> and, like, you know. When we talk about racial profiling, all the time I'll get asked, like, oh, have, have you ever been randomly searched at an airport? And, you know, I give them the facts. I'm off beige. Uh, and, you know, I have been searched at an airport. And at the time, I had a beard. And, and you know, the TSA pulled me aside. And, and they had some questions for me that they never have for the slice of Wonder Bread in line behind me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they brought me into a room. And they sat me down. And they said, Choose the pita bread or the flour tortilla. <laughs> but this time I was ready. Because I looked straight at them and I was like, guys, I can't have either. I'm gluten free. 
and they knew I was white for sure. <laughs> So you're free to go. Please enjoy your flight to Boise. Oh. And maybe I'm not a discernible race, but there is one thing that we can all agree on. And that is that I am a gangly boy. Uh, I have the anatomical build of a sunflower, if you haven't noticed. Um, you know, do you ever like pass one of those used car dealerships and you see one of these things? That's not me. I keep getting phone calls. Use your eyes. My body type is, my body type is like, when, you know when you like test spaghetti to see if it's al dente? <laughs> and you throw it against the wall and it just sticks up like this. Hey, uh, so you're just not going to say anything? I'm sorry, can I help you? Yeah, um, I just think it's kind of weird. Uh, Trump is president, the whole world is crumpling around us, and you're pretending like nothing's going on. Mm -hmm. IDK, I just think it's weird. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for expressing your concern. Uh, we actually, we thought about that a lot, and, and, and we figured that, you know, there's enough of that in the media, and, and that people could just kind of use a break. Uh, but if you insist, America is looking worse than, than Trump's toupee right a toupee now. Toupee joke, <laughs> really? Those haven't been funny since before the primaries ended, and we might have Trump supporters in the crowd. You really need to appeal to a broader audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so I have no opinion on Trump. I'm somewhere in the middle. Is that better? Now don't just straddle the fence in the middle like an idiot. Give us some substance. Okay, well, uh, minorities and immigrants are objectively taking a large hit since the election, and it has caused absolute panic amongst the community. And, you and I just... are white, I think, mostly. <laughs> you have no right to comment on the struggles of those people. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, all right, if I, I have no ability to uh, comment on, on the struggles of those people, should we, should we just... Don't you dare just ignore those struggling people. If you are not part of the solution, you are part of the problem. Thank you. Fine. In other news, uh, people went crazy after police pulled a gun uh, out and fired shots at a, at a Mexican man in his front yard recently. Three things. First of all, you can't say people were crazy. That's just being insensitive to the mentally ill. Second, you are white. I, I, th I think mostly. So you can't comment on whether or not that guy was Mexican. And you have to support the police force. If you don't, you are just encouraging violence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I have no opinion on the color of the man's skin or the actions of the police officer or the mental states of any of the involved parties. And there you go, struggling I, that line again, you dumb idiot. <laughs> All right, Planned Parenthood. Don't say a fucking word unless you've had a period for 12 years! <laughs> yeah. Right, you're right, you're right. I I'm just a stupid, straight, white, mostly, maybe, male, with no right to comment on the rights uh, given by our government or are the rights of the abridged citizens of this country? Okay, okay, that's, that's just wrong. You, you represent a large demographic of people. You have to speak out uh, and, and, and take an issue on circumstances or, uh, or you're just selfish and, and wrong. Okay, well, I just don't see how we can give uh, meaningful substance uh, about such polarizing subjects without uh, upsetting anybody. And I definitely don't think uh, that we can, you know, approach this from some sort of comedic standpoint without coming off as just overplayed. Yeah, okay, um, I'm getting kind of sad now. Uh, can you talk about something fun? <laughs> something fun. Ted Cruz sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Ted Cruz is the Zodiac Killer! Yeah! Woo! We have a great show for you tonight!